pretty good. Whoa! 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 Doctors and HF checking in here, guys. I know you missed me. I missed you more. Look in these brown eyes. I don't know. Do I keep you safe? I keep you guys safe. Dude, Rusty, you're the best, dude. Yes, I know. You're awesome. What do you mean business, dog? Oh, God. This hogfish that we just did a couple weeks ago. Got a sweet octopus. We got a nice little breakfast for you today. Oh, yeah. Getting gigantic. Fighting a cow today. You're fighting a cow today. And we got a whole lot of snake stuff to clean. I know a thing or two, but it only lasts 30 seconds. Hey! What's up, YouTube? What's going on? The turkeys aren't anywhere near your car. And if they do go on that new car, we're not gonna have any more turkeys, right? So you better behave, dude. Now we got all sorts of things to do over here today. And it is freezing cold. Last night, it was down in, to 47 degrees, which I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, guys. This ain't a competition, but for us, 47 is freaking freezing. So first thing we gotta do is I gotta feed these cows and the goats. We got a new cow. It's been pretty crazy. Getting him into here. He's a bull, obviously, for Remy. It was nuts yesterday. He's kinda nice, but not really that nice. You gonna let me touch you? Oh, wow, you are being nice right now. You go get you some food. Remy, all right, you guys ready to eat? I gotta go fill up this bucket. It's honestly a little scary. Like yesterday, he was charging me, charged Gianna. It's pretty gnarly. You gonna eat today? Huh? You gonna be a nice bull? You gonna be a nice dude, now that I got some food? Oh, God. Oh. Me over. Come on. You see that? <laughs> no! Hey, dude. Ready? Get in here. That wasn't that bad. Gotta grab the hose, fill up their water, and we got a whole lot of snake stuff to clean today. The snake room is a freaking disaster. We gotta clean a million cages. Brady! Aw, oh, dude. Good job. Now you got a bucket stuck to you. Man. Brady, go shoot! Whoa! 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 Other oh. around, dog! Dude, Remington is trying to, like, show dominance to him. He's like, yo, this is my house. Even though it's the girl, she's gonna try to mount him to show that she's the boss over here. I don't know, man. You guys gotta learn to get along with each other. Yo, relax, bro. Don't, yo, don't you try to freaking... See? He's a jerk. Now be careful. Like I said, it was really cold last night. 47 degrees down here. So, my little Chaka man, I keep in the snake room when it's really cold because we keep the snake room at night at like 84 degrees, nice and toasty for all my cold-blooded creatures. And then of course the mammal. He can't get that cold, right? Right little Chucky? We got a nice little breakfast for you today. Got some rats, got some watermelon, some cantaloupe, even got some honeydew in there. Ran out of grapes, he ate the last of the grapes and the blueberries yesterday. He's so freaking cute, guys. And he's gonna have a really big cage soon. And it's not even gonna be his final cage. It's just gonna be the next step. So this cage is what? Maybe four foot by eight feet. The new cage, we're gonna be putting him in one of those poultry pens. Once we redo this area right now, I'll give you guys a little sneak peek. This area right here, we just cleared out with the excavator the other day. We're about to install like a P-Rock foundation, like a shed, put some cinder block walls on it, section everything off. And then all those poultry cages that we keep the macaws in are gonna go right here. So four big cages. Cages right here with a roof and everything. We got the metal roofing. We're gonna build a nice little A-frame metal roof. On the back of each enclosure, we're gonna have the 32-inch thermal heaters that I use on all the animals at night. So that way next year when we get these cold days, instead of moving all these animals around and having it be in such a pain in the butt, all I gotta do is flip a switch and then all the birds will have plenty of heat to withstand any temperature that we get down here. So it's gonna be freaking awesome. Let's get into the snake room. Today, we gotta clean and feed a bunch of things. These Gila monsters and beaded lizards, they like being in their water bowls so much. It's almost an every other day thing because they just get their water bowls dirty so freaking fast. So we're gonna start over here, then we're gonna start pulling out all the big stuff. First up, Shatid. See how you're acting today. We got rats to frosting, so she definitely smells them. Let her come down. Here, curious snake. Look at that beautiful hood. You are so pretty. Alright, so let's go here. Uh, 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 uh. 
It's a small 36 inch snake. Normally I like to use something smaller because she does what she just did right there. Tries to freaking strike at me. And she is not like Rusty. Rusty doesn't really take too many swings at me. She does. Rusty will only ever come at me if he's in his enclosure. But she did. It's a different story. She is a little wiry and comes right for your hand every time. And she's getting a lot bigger. I mean, she's getting a lot faster. So I gotta really be careful with her. She's not really too focused on getting out of this can right now, which is good. So let's put the top on. Get her enclosure straightened up. Gotta get her some water. Spot clean this cage. Fluff it all nice. And put her back. Nice and clean. Let's go ahead and get her out. I got a longer hook because I'm being smarter. She's crazy, man. It's gonna be real interesting when she gets rusty size. She's probably gonna keep that same attitude. Look at that thing. Yeah, she is just mean to business, dog. She's such a pretty king. Almost completely healed up, too. I'll put the locks on when I'm done with this tower. I took them all off just to make it a little bit easier. Rusty, gotta get you out. Even though your cage isn't too bad, we're still gonna take him out and get him some fresh water. Just see how big he's getting. We've been feeding him drumsticks, guys, like. <laughs> Every other day I give him a couple drumsticks just because we're running out of running out of pythons. But as you can see, his body weight is freaking awesome. Over 13 feet long now, dude. He's just getting gigantic. And he's such an awesome freaking snake. Rusty, you're the best dude. Yes, I know. You're awesome. Put you in the can. Bada bing bada boom. Just like that. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Go down in here like this. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I need a bigger can for you, bro. You're outgrowing it. Just this color is recently are amazing yeah. from being in here. It's getting way more orange. So let's just go ahead. His cage isn't really dirty. Let's give it a little spot clean. Give him some fresh water and put his ass back. And then we gotta give Bruce some water, spot clean his cage, and then those rattlesnakes are disgusting. We're gonna have to change out a bunch of that. Just like that. Hey, Russ. Look at that beautiful hood. You magnificent creature. There you go, nice and clean, got a fresh water. And then Bruce, looks like Bruce just pooped in his water bowl, thankfully, which is awesome. Makes it way easier to clean, because then you don't gotta change his substrate out. Hey Bruce, how are you acting today, man? How you doing, dude? I got some food for you in just a little bit. Let's get this water out of here. Change this out real quick. Let's get the rattlesnakes. Got some big old meatballs in this cage. These rattlesnakes have just gigantic freaking poops, man. So safely get these guys out. You see, she is, of course, feeding response. So the only time you really see these guys strike is when they are hungry. And she has not been eating as much as she should be because it's just that time of the year where it's cooler outside. And in the wild, they start to breed and they stop eating. Go ahead, get her in there. Batman's gonna work his way out. Be real careful, keep an eye on her while I get him out. Great range is pretty sick and far. I'm actually gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and get that loop right here. Let him move out a little bit more. There we go. Watch Robin. Batman out. Look at that, guys. Getting gigantic. It's a monster. Oh, keep your head away from me, dude. Stick him in here with her. Yeah, even having the heat on last night, it got down to 47 degrees here. And even with the heat on, they still feel really cool to the touch. And that's all it really takes for these animals to stop eating this time of the year. Once it cools down at night, the temperature drops. Even having the heat on here, it's still a little bit colder than usual. Then they go off of eating for a little bit. Get this cage cleaned up, get him some fresh water, move on. Time to go back. Look at these monsters, bro. So freaking big, dude. And it does no justice on camera either. Like anytime somebody comes over to the property and gets to see how big they are in person, they're like, holy crap, these bro. Thanks for this. Absolutely insane. Freaking gigantic. Robin in there, there you go, hun. At least they're a little bit cooler, so they're definitely not going to be feisty right now. There you go. Well, try to pinch them in there. Boom. So we just cleaned out these guys' water bowls, and we're just filling them up with some fresh water. These monitors just poop in their water for the most part, which makes it really easy to clean out. 
substrate isn't too bad on these guys. We may be, hopefully, we're at the end of January right now. This is pretty much it for the cold nights. I hopefully this is gonna be our last cold front that we're getting, because we still have a few days this week that's down in the 50s, which is why the lizards are still in here. But once we're past that cold front stuff, it's time to move these lizards outside where they can get some natural sunlight and really, really enjoy being here. I hate keeping them in these cages, but it's better than them freezing to death outside. A lot of people say under 65, bring your lizards and reptiles and stuff in, but I think 65 is just still way too cool for them. Under 70 for me, man, I bring them inside and put them on heat now. Especially after what happened when I first moved here and I lost my black dragons on Christmas. They came out during the day to bask in the sunlight and the temperature dropped so freaking fast and it rained. It got down to 30 something degrees plus the rain frozen dude and it was the worst experience ever and i never want to deal with that ever again so these guys cages aren't really that bad they've only been in here for maybe a week or so so i'm just gonna pull a couple pieces of poop out of here oh they're so beautiful in here though i love keeping them in these visions the visions just look great they have the heat it's very well lit and you can really appreciate these animals like that just look how beautiful that snake is even though it's not venomous dude that is one of my favorite looking snakes, man. It's just such an impressive animal. The oranges, the jet black, shiny ass head. So freaking cool, man. Blackhead pythons, definitely slept on, man. Some of the coolest. Forgot to tell you, but she was in her little hide, mm -hmm. sticking her head out. Like, I forget what it's called when they lift their heads up a little bit. Oh yeah, they were so doing that's, that. that's what they do in the wild. So they hang out in little holes and little burrows. And that is why their head is so black is because they use that to thermoregulate their entire body. So if they are too cold and you know, they stick their head out of their hides, that black absorbs all of the sunlight and heats up the rest of their body. It's like a lot of different animals. Alligators do the same thing, you know? They soak up the sun and their osteoderms, they freaking get all nice and warm. And that's how they thermoregulate themselves. Oh, yo, look who we got coming in here. Oh, What's it's, up? it's Marty. Yo. I thought you were gonna be Alex. <laughs> switched it up on you. You did switch it up on me. This is my electrician, everybody, Marty. What's up? Yo, let's show them the tattoos while I got you on camera. So check this out. So this is a big ass shark mouth cover up. He had some like skull nautical star thingamajig right here. This hogfish that we just did a couple weeks ago. Got that sweet octopus and a bunch of coral. And we got a little sunken ship in there. Two dog with some more coral on the bottom. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I'm looking real good. Man, man, man. Oh, there man, you man. are. Hell yeah. I'm fighting a cow today. You're fighting a cow today? I'm ready. I'm oh, ready. dude, I'm so ready to watch you he looks, fight He looks cow. real nice, so I'm sure he's not. Dude, did you bring a red towel? I don't know. I don't know. There's a red chair red. right there. I don't own anything red. Right, so we're going to have to too. find something inside. Yeah, That'll be well, hilarious. Hopefully I don't bleed red, so. Yeah, let's, let's, let's hope not. <laughs> Got to clean these guys also. He always strikes at me every time I open up the cage. Wow, you're not going to strike at me today? That's crazy. Put your hand on there, Fada. It's only very striking as soon as I open up her cage. So this is my female gabino. Next video, we're going to finally put the albino gaboons in here. But this is the female gabino. She is just absolutely beautiful. Such a cool, stinking snake. I love these guys. And I'm going to keep on with the bitus stuff. Now that I got those albino gaboons, I got all sorts of weird little projects in mind. This Eastern Diamondback, he's gonna strike as soon as I open this for sure. Every time. That was a little baby strike, dude. What the heck was that? I know you got better. It's just because they're cool right now. They're not as crazy as they normally are. Get this little guy out of here. Oh, excuse me. There we go. I don't even like tailing this snake, honestly. The big rattlesnakes, I'll hold them by the tail and use the hook. Rattlesnakes just strike so far and they're so freaking springy. It's one of those snakes that you really don't want to tail too much. Even the gaboons, man, they're such strong strikers. You holding their tail, they'll use that as leverage to pull themselves and just bite you where you're holding them. So you want to be really careful with bites like that. Let's go ahead, change out this water, give them some freshy, fill them back up, get a little scrub, and put them back. There we go. Put them back. Now. Yo! Yo! Dog! Yo! Are you gonna strike again? Yeah. Oh yeah! Damn, he wants you. Yeah, dude, he is. Hey! Hey! Yo, relax. I'll feed you in a second. They're hungry. And they smell these rats, bro. So the feeding response is on today. 
Now this is the Central American rattlesnake who is also of course going to strike right out. You got to poop in, you need some freaking water. Beautiful rattlesnake though. These things are so freaking cool. You just see like the texture of their scales. Super knobby. Very different heads than those Eastern Diamondbacks. Look at that. Just so stinking cool. They almost feel like Gila monsters, so they're super bumpy. You might be able to tell in that video, I got a good enough camera to be able to see how bumpy it is, but they're really freaking cool rattlesnakes. Go ahead, stick them in there. Get this cage cleaned up. Man, then we gotta do all the spitting cobras today, and I am not looking forward to it. We'll talk about that more in just a second. Next up is Penny. A little update on her. My cute little copperhead. Hey, baby. No musking today. She's disgusting sometimes. When she wants to be in a mood where she's super striking and being defensive, she will literally stick that tail right up in the air and shoot musk right in your face, dude. And they are some of the most accurate muskers also. It's not like a, like the Barons Racers or other Colubrids where they just kind of musk and it just like comes out onto your hands and then it smells. They literally, these cantails, they shoot it out accurately, kind of like a spitting cobra does with their venom. Very accurate with the musk and it's freaking disgusting. Go ahead and get this cleaned. <sighs> and then unfortunately we gotta do all the, all the spitting cobras next, which is great. The fun part, Spitting cobras, even though this is not a true cobra and it's not a true spitter, it still hoods up like a cobra and it still spits like a cobra. This is my ring calls from South Africa, who I got from Mr. Dingo Dinkleman himself. And he is a crazy little snake. I love him though, because he's like a super venomous hognose snake. Even, actually, I shouldn't say super venomous because the venom on them is not the worst thing in the world, but still not great. It'll still put you in the hospital and it is not freaking cool, but just such an awesome looking snake, man. Let's see if we can get him this. Oh my God. Yo, relax with the spitting, dude. Such a cool snake, man, especially when he hoods up like that. And then you can see his skin stretch on the hood, and then you really see that nice bright orange on the back of it. Such a pretty snake. These snakes are actually known to play dead also, just like Bogno snakes do. And not only do they play dead, but they are also a live birth animal. So they don't lay eggs or anything. They just have a whole bunch of live babies. Super, super cool. I'm keeping this guy in the collection. I want to get rid of all my spitters just because I'm sick of dealing with it all the time. And not only do they spit and make an absolute mess when you're taking care of them. Woo. So not only do you have to deal with getting spit at all the time and getting venom all over you, which is dangerous, but look, you can see I got venom all over this thing and probably all over me also, which is not good. Gotta make sure as soon as you're done taking care of spitters, you gotta clean your clothes, take a shower right away. Cause I have a kid, you know what I mean? The last thing I wanna do is go inside with venom on me and hold my daughter or something like that. So honestly guys, I wanna get rid of all these black and white spares. I'm gonna keep him just cause he's really cool and I like having like a spitter for education and to show you guys. But as far as these black and white spitters goes that we're about to clean right now, I'm probably gonna end up putting them up for sale and just getting rid of them because not only do I need some cages open so I could free some stuff up and move them around, I have no desire to breed those spitting cobras anymore. Yo, he means business, dog. He's a great hooder, too. Another reason why I just want to keep him. Such an impressive snake. Got orange stripes, that beautiful hood with that crazy contrast. He's got a cute little almost hog nose looking face. Obviously, the back of that hood, look at that thing. Look at the back of that hood. So sick. Like, what other cobra looks like that that cool? Oh. You just got to spit on. I see a lot of people with rank calls, and they're not pretty like this one, too. Hey, is it good looking stuff? <laughs> ah, oh, dude! I definitely need to take a shower when I am done, because I am soaked in venom. But we still got three more to go. There you go, get in there. I'm not even going to bother cleaning the glass on this thing. Because he just spits like crazy, man. As soon as people walk into the room, whether you clean the glass or not, he just spits all over it, which is a pain in the butt. Okay, so now the black and white spitters. They're real bitey. My least favorite of all the snakes. I shouldn't say that. Black and white spitting cobras are very cool. They're with really awesome contrast, them being black and white. Of course, you're gonna be spitting at me today, pain in my butt. They are very, very bitey. When I first got these guys, they were little teeny tiny babies. You guys, the ones that have been watching the channel for a long time, I'm sure you remember the video. They were just tiny, tiny little worms, and they were super chill. I actually used to let them crawl on my hand and crawl through my fingers, but I definitely don't want to do that with them now because they're freaking serious, man. And these are Indo-Chinese cobras, 
So it's an Asian venom, which is very serious. Almost as bad as getting bit by a monocle cobra. You do not want to mess around with this. But such a beautiful snake. And I'm going to get rid of the trio. So if anybody is interested and watches this video, you have your venomous license, you live somewhere you can have these snakes, you're experienced with spitting cobras, and you know what you're doing, feel free to send me an email. I'll give you a really good deal on the trio, all three. We're going to take all of them out right now, and we're going to put them all in the same bucket, just to make our lives a little bit easier, and then go ahead and service these cages after that. So that's the male. Go ahead and grab the striped female. So the male is striped, this female is striped, meaning there's a horizontal stripe that goes all the way down her body. You can see that stripe going all the way down her dorsal. Boom. Yeah. Going all the way down her spine, that stripe. And then we also have a banded female, just like that. So instead of having a stripe going all the way down her spine, you kind of have these bands that go all the way down her body. Super cool. Kind of like a little spectacle shape on the back, but not exactly. And then here's all three of them together. A big old mess of spitting cobras, man. Look at them things. Super cool. So hit me up. I'm only getting rid of them as a trio. I'm not sending them out separately. You're down for the trio. I'll give you a good deal on them. Holla at you, boy. All right, so now that we got the black and whites safely in their enclosure, it's time to do these little Naja Atra. These Chinese cobras that are not spitters, and they are a pearl morph, so they're a lot lighter than the normal Chinese cobras. Normal Chinese cobras are really dark, almost black, dark brown. Don't really have much of a pattern or look really pretty. These guys have a beautiful pattern on the back of their hood in a very nice light coloration versus the normal ones that are super dark. Let's go ahead and open up this bottom guy. I think this is the male right here. Very, very cool. Look at the back of that hood. Almost like a Formosa Cobra. Very, very awesome pattern down there. Super pretty snakes, man. I love these little guys. And they don't get big either. These are full grown. That is it. Small Cobras, man. Super cool though. So let's get these in the bin and clean these cages. And then it's probably about time to start feeding stuff. Oh, we got a clean kilo in the caboodle also. Put these guys back. Bada bing, bada boom. And then, uh, oh, we got to take Chandler out. Show you how big he's getting. I got to clean a bunch of small stuff over there too. Show you that male gabino and then those female albino eastern diamondbacks that I have. Oh my god, did I just put both of them in the same cage? I did. Indeed. God dang it. I think these guys are used to each other. Oh look, they're probably trying to bang already. You know what? Oh yeah. He's definitely trying to bang. See his little head nods right there? He was just doing his little twitchy thing. Oh yeah, see he's doing hell yeah, you look at those little twitchies. Little twitchy twitchies. Alright, we're keeping them in there. Huh, maybe they'll lock up and we'll get baby Chinese. Freaking cobras. That'll be cool. I'm just gonna keep these together. It's a happy accident. So let's lock up all these guys. Let's take out little Chandler. See how he's acting today. He's super sweet as a baby. Now that he's getting some size and some meals in him, he's definitely getting a little on the striky side. Ooh, and we got a nice full shed in there too. That must have happened overnight. Very, very cool. So let's carefully open this cage. He might strike out. Let's see. You get a little strike from you? Huh? You see some motion? So motion, motion, motion. No, no strikey. All right. He's actually got a decent sized rattle now. It's probably like four or five buttons. So now you can actually hear his rattle. Remember when we first got him, we couldn't hear anything. But dude, what a beautiful freaking rattlesnake. He's so stinking cool. Let's get a little better look. Maybe just right here, look at that. So stinking cool, man. Now these are Eastern Diamondback rattlesnakes, so they are gonna get hopefully pretty big. The last last couple ones that I have kind of stayed on the smaller side, so hopefully these guys have a bigger bloodline. And dude, might even be the same size as my big rattlesnakes. You never know. So I'm just gonna keep on feeding, and see how big he gets. All right, let's clean out some of these cages. Get to all that small stuff. While we have this guy out, give him a, a little gander since we don't put the puffs on the videos as much. They're getting a decent size. These are those puff adders I got from Mark McCarthy. They're beautiful. This is the darker one. And the light Tanzanian that I have, dude, she's beautiful. She's almost like a yellow color. Super cool snakes. Also in the Bittis family, just like the Kaboom Vipers. Ooh. That little beaded. Wiz! Wiz Khalifa! Give you some new water, dog. Same thing with this little beaded. 
they love to be in their water bowl and they just poop in the water which makes it easy to keep their mulch clean but he's a little freaking firecracker dude he just wants to attack me he's crazy i'm not even gonna not even go and miss with him let's see what else we got over here we got the albino eastern diamondbacks you got low water and a shed so we're gonna take you out Give me some fresh water. Same thing with you. You got a little bit of water. Oh, what is this? Oh, this is the Russell's Viper. Gotcha. All right, so yeah, we got to do all the waters on these guys real quick. Spitting Cobra, watch the eyeballs. All right, cool. Let's get this all knocked out. So this is the male Gabino. Ghostface killer. Got a full shed from him. It's a little on the dirty side, but we can clean that up. You even got the head and everything on there. I have to give it to Gianna to do something cool. I'll put this aside. Let's just take a little look at him real quick. Cause his colors are freaking insane, dude. They're like just so much more vibrant than the female. I mean, the female is super pretty, but God dang, dude. Look at the colors on that male, man. Just so freaking sick. I gotta be really careful with these guys. They're very, very, very fast strikers. They're not like Cobras that hood up before they strike and stuff, even though Cobras can strike when they're not hooded up. They don't really telegraph too much. They're just super springy. Strikey animals gotta be really careful. One of the fastest striking snakes in the world also. Obviously not the fastest, but one of them. So cool. Okay, so now that we got all these babies pretty much cleaned and set up, new waters and stuff, these guys I like to soak once a week. That's why I have just a little bit bigger water bowl in here. I like to just encourage him to stay in it. So we're just gonna take him, put him in there. Hey, relax dude, he does not like the water. Whew. excuse me sir. All right, we'll just put you right there. You know where your water's at. But these guys, when they're babies, you want to make sure that you soak them at least once a week so that they stay nice and hydrated. Because sometimes they're not the smartest creatures in the world and they won't be able to find their water when they're really young. But he's getting to a pretty good size where he's figuring things out, so I'm not too worried about it. He's super healthy. Fat and happy. Great body weight. He eats like a champ. That thing has never refused a meal so far. Stuff doesn't need stuff checking in here, guys. I know you missed me. I missed you more. But do you know I missed even more than you guys? Mr. Kilo, a little nervous because he's been cranky, cranky lately and I haven't seen him in a while. I look a little different, you won't recognize me, but we're gonna get in there and we're gonna touch him and stuff. I wanna take them sunglasses off, dog. Well, dude, they're prescription, so. Oh, all right. No, 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 hey. Maybe I'll see a little bit better. Look in these brown eyes. I don't know. Do I keep you safe? I keep you guys safe. Do, do, do your thing. Let's see here. Mr. Kilo. Fuck, I ain't lying, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, you forsty creature. Look at him. Mr. Kilo, get off. Oh yeah, get away from me, Mike. Turn your head away. Come on, give me a tail then. Yeah, big guy, there you have it. Yeah, look at him. Look at him. Oh, no, 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 no. Give me a second here, Kilo. Oh, buddy. Pulled off for me there, Mike. Look at him. We're fine. He's so blind, bro. It's just so hard to get him to like hood up at you and stay at attention. That's why if you guys notice whenever we're feeding him or he's in his cage. Watch out. Oh, that's not how you do it. Is that how you use a hook? Yeah, guys, so I'm a professional. You can clearly tell I work with African bush vipers every day. I'm a little out of practice with uh, big, cranky lapids. And that's why we have to come here and work with them to make ourselves comfortable again. Used to be here eight hours a day doing this stuff, and now I'm not. And you can tell. Not bad though. Did a great job. Oh, I miss him. I tried to get him to hood up, so that was my that was my issue there. But. Yeah, he's just, dude, he's he's blind as a bat, man. So. so it's a lot harder to get him to do that without the free handling aspect, and mm -hmm. he's not my baby boy. You gotta do it as him. soon as he's out of the cage. That's With literally him. all you got. You got 30 seconds, and then he's just back to just being a regular snake. I know a thing or two about only lasting 30 seconds. Hey! <laughs> Touch and bust, touch and bust, touch and bust. Get him out of there, get him out of there. Here we go. You hear him hissing. So, putting him away or getting him out was probably about a 6.7 out of 10. He legit took my hook from me. We're going for an 8 out of 10 here, okay, folks? We're going for an 8 out of 10. Feisty boy, bro. Even Kilo. All these snakes, you forget that they keep growing, but when I stop seeing them, bro, like he's massive. He's absolutely massive. I know he's no rusty, but bro, he's thick. He's a thick boy. He's been eating. He got some been. girth on him. Yeah, he's been eating. Still got that attitude though. Still a cranky dude. Secure. But he's so Let's pretty. Look, look at that. Look at that boy. Nice and clean. All right, Brandon. Gotta, gotta get Gabby. She's hiding. She's got a big old poopy in there. We gotta clean. There we go. Bro, wait until the albinos are that big, bro. What the crap? That is gonna be so 
sick. All their colors come in and stuff. Oh yeah, so cool, man. She's just a freaking beast, dude. I love that snake. Imagine just hiking and you're just in the middle of the trail. Yeah. Yeah. Very carefully. There you go. Now you gotta be really careful with these gaboons, man. Like I was saying before, that leverage, Brandon holding them right like that, she can just use that as leverage, come right around, just do a freaking, do an upside down U-turn and just grab you right on the hand. It's crazy how big she is compared to, we were just at Mark McCarthy's yesterday, one of my buddies and neighbor, and dude, his gaboons, I'm not even kidding, are twice this size and twice as thick. It's the craziest thing ever. And if you guys want to see what that looks like, you got to go on Ryder's Ranch channel and watch the last video of us getting our new cow because the gaboons are probably in the middle of that video. We just stopped over at uh, Mark's yesterday so the baby can see all the animals because she loves it over there. But wow, dude, such an impressive freaking snake. All clean. Nice and clean. Oh, I love a clean vision. Beautiful. Ready? Ready. Let's get her out of there. There you go. Hi, baby. Cute little thing. She's a little hissy. She's booped straight up just like that. You got her in the middle. Boom. Floor. Get her coming the opposite way. There you go. How you doing, Mama? Perfect. Yep, just like that. That way her head is in the other direction. Grab the freaking front just like that. Perfect, dude. There we go. Perfectly, dude. Hell yeah. There you go, Gabby. Nice and clean. She's such a good snake. Still strikes sometimes when you walk by the cage, but for the most part, she's pretty chill. Just so scary how potent their venom is, you know. And how much. Uh-huh. That was a bad bite right now. All right, that's it. So while we were cleaning cages, we have little Brian here soaking. So that way he stays nice and hydrated and gets all the water that he needs. Hey, you cute little man. He is adorable. I love radiated tortoises, man. They're just so stinking cool. So let's go ahead, put him back in his little cage right here. Go put your water bowl back and all that good stuff. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Got everything nice and clean in here. We're about to start feeding some things, and then we got other things that we gotta do over here too, and uh, Mr. Alex over here, he's gonna go check out the new cow. I got a day with a bull. And dude, uh, that cow is freaking crazy. So head over to Alex's channel, Duff Does Nature Stuff, link is all down below. Go give him a subscription, or go subscribe, whatever you call it, you know what I mean? Head over there, check Alex out. See you guys on the next one. God bless. TylenolTattoos.com for all your merch.